Welcome to chapter four. Welcome to chapter four of uh, SSCI 110, California Studies, and this is the um, Rawls and Bean book, uh, California and Interpretive History. These are my narrated PowerPoints. Uh, this chapter is called Outposts of a Dying Empire. So basically, we're talking about from the mid to late 1700s, the building of the Mission, Presidio, and Pueblo system, only for it to be teetering uh, and crashing about uh, 50 years later. We start with a guy named Bucarelli and a guy named Anza. Uh, this guy, Antonio de Bucarelli, uh, became the new Viceroy of New Spain in 1771. Um, and Bucarelli adopted uh, Captain de Anza's proposal to open a land route uh, from what is today's Sonora State in Northwest Mexico uh, to what is today's uh, city and county of Monterey in modern California. Uh, so between January and May of 1774, Anza traveled from near today's Tucson, Arizona, all the way up to Monterey, California, and then back to near Tucson. Uh, about a year later, uh, there was another expedition led by Lieutenant Juan Manuel de Ayala, uh, and he was the uh, first one uh, to actually sail through what the Spanish called La Boca, which we today, of course, call the Golden Gate, and explored extensively uh, uh, de Ayala did uh, extensively what is today the uh, San Francisco Bay Area with ships. Also in 1775, Anza began a second expedition. Uh, that expedition was responsible for establishing the Presidio and Mission at San Francisco uh, the following year. Uh, and in order to uh, make sure that people were living there, he brought along people that he called uh, pobladores. These are the people who were the populators of the future California uh, in New Spain. Uh, he brought along 30 soldier colonists and their wives and families and four civilian settlers and their wives and families. Uh, strategically, uh, one of the reasons why this was done to bring these pobladores, uh, you know, married uh, people with families, was to try to thwart uh, what was frequently brutal sexual attacks by the Spanish men upon uh, California Indian women. Uh, this was apparently was a common thing uh, since the beginning of Spanish uh, settlement in this area. So they figured if these people had wives and families, they would be a lot less uh, prone to uh, doing uh, this sort of thing. At least that was Anza's idea. Um, as the new governor of California, a guy named ne Neve was supposed to solve food supply problems. That was his job. And he did this by establishing uh, agricultural towns or pueblos. Uh, he established uh, the Pueblo de San Jose de Guadalupe in 1777, which is essentially today's modern city of San Jose. And he also established uh, a pueblo called El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora La Reina de Los Angeles de Rio de uh, Porciuncola, if I got that right, in 1781, four years later, which of course became uh, the, what is today the city of Los Angeles. Little did he know uh, what he started. Uh, the uh, populators or pobladores of these early pueblos, especially the one in Los Angeles, were often from uh, the poorest classes of people in the southern part of New Spain, today's Mexico, and often uh, they came from what is today the Mexican state of uh, Sinaloa. Uh, there was a lot of Native American resistance to all of this, as you might imagine. Uh, historians have written volumes about this, uh, and they say that uh, many California Indians resisted all efforts of mission, missionization uh, through a lot of methods. Uh, passive resistance, non-cooperation, work slowdowns, destruction of tools and equipment, and as you might imagine there were some escapes from some of these pueblos and missions uh, uh, of Native Americans trying to, to just get out of there so that they would not be under the oppression of the uh, Spanish who were trying to essentially take over their way of life and, and, uh, and their areas. Uh, these revolts, however, didn't last very long. Uh, the most successful of them was by the Yuma Indians, the Yumas against two settlements uh, on the Colorado River in 1781, basically obliterating these two Spanish settlements uh, down what uh, near today is uh, Yuma. Uh, you can see the map on the um, right, which was a more extensive uh, map that was made after uh, the explorations uh, which was a bit more accurate. Uh, this is uh, courtesy of the Auction House Christie's, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Uh, now from about that point on, the 1770s to 1780s, uh, New Spain made little effort to strengthen its outposts in Alta California. Basically, the people who were launched to do this were on their own. Uh, 
The Spanish uh, had their own issues at home and really could not pay great attention uh, to their uh, newfound uh, colony. Uh, in 1781, it's estimated that the population of non-Indians at that time was about 600. By 1821, it was about five times that, uh, mainly from the birth of descendants of the original uh, Spanish colonists intermingling with the natives, uh, rather than the arrival of new colonists. Uh, so the population of people who were considered to be Spanish and under the, under the crown directly really did not increase that much. Uh, so it didn't seem like they really had a handle on populating the area extensively in order to have any kind of uh, you know, political control. This is a great map that comes from a website called missionscalifornia.com. Uh, which shows uh, the historic missions, presidios, and pueblos in California. And this next uh, panel is simply a full screen of that same map. And you can see how ultimately the missions uh, stretched all the way from the first one, uh, San Diego de, de Acala, uh, all the way up to the one uh, up in, uh, basically, way up in Sonoma County. Uh, so there were quite a few of them uh, stretching from the uh, 1769 all the way up to uh, 1821. Uh, there were very few observations of the relationship between these Spanish colonists uh, and their um, subjugated Native Americans. Uh, when I say outside observation, observations, I mean people from outside of the Spanish realm who could look objectively at what was going on. But there was one French visitor to Monterey by the name of uh, La Perouse. Uh, said that he, he said in his writings that he found a distressing resemblance to the slave plantations he saw in the West Indies uh, with respect to what was going on in the pueblos and missions of, of New California, uh, of Alta California, uh, that it didn't look like uh, it was any different than how uh, colonists enslaved Africans uh, in the uh, Caribbean. Uh, there was a Spanish obs observer by the name of Malaspina who denounced those so-called horrible and oppressive impressions of the missions by outsiders and said that they were inaccurate. So uh, I suppose it depends on who's uh, you know writing your check. Uh, uh, outside observer from France uh, who probably had an axe to grind with Spain uh, saying that it was terrible like the West Indies, like slave trade, and the Spanish saying no, 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 we treat these people well. So history seems to prevail on the side of the Spanish not treating the Native Americans well. Uh, there's very little testimony that actually survives in the historical record with respect to uh, how the Indians are treated from the Indians themselves. Uh, but there was one set of observations that were in recorded history by a woman by the name of uh, Bartolomea, an Indian woman who grew up in Mission San Gabriel uh, near LA, uh, today's Los Angeles, who said that life in the mission was a life of misery, humiliation, and terror. So from that perspective, it's pretty hard to ignore uh, those, uh, those notes in history. Um, there was a strong suggestion in the historical record, what little we have of it, that life for Indian women in particular at the missions and pueblos was especially uh, severe. A lot of uh, sexual uh, issues and a lot of exploitation by the Spanish upon the Native Americans. Uh, mission registers, which uh, in many cases did survive, reveal an, an alarmingly high death rate amongst the Native Americans. Uh, this was primarily caused by diseases that Indians had no immunity against. Uh, it's estimated that during the mission period, the native population between San Diego up to the Bay Area fell from approximately 72,000 to approximately 18,000. So that's from about 1769 to about 1821. Uh, so that's uh, you know really a, an obliteration of people when you think about it. Um, Spanish attempts to reinforce their teetering mission in Pueblo system eventually were unsuccessful. Uh, uh, in spite of that, uh, uh, the Roman Catholic Church uh, has moved uh, in many steps to try to take Father Serra and promote him to sainthood within their faith. Uh, uh, he has gone as far as being uh, beatified by Pope John Paul II in 1988 uh, and may still attain sainthood. But those who uh, uh, are allied on the historical side of the Native Americans say that this is a controversial appointment if he ever becomes a saint, uh, Father Sarah, because of the way he and the institution of the missions in the Pueblos treated uh, the Native Americans. Uh, the Central Valley was not explored a lot. Uh, the farthest inland settlement from the coast in terms of the missions 
uh, was Mission Soledad, which is in the Salinas Valley, which is only 30 miles from the ocean. Uh, most of the expeditions inland to the Great Central Valley were to pursue escaping uh, Native Americans or to recover stolen cattle or, or for other purposes, uh, maybe looking for riches and so on. Um, the son of Jose Moraga, uh, who was the first one to sort of explore what is today the San Francisco Bay Area Peninsula, Gabriel Moraga, the son of Jose Moraga, uh, did explore uh, to some extent uh, in the Central Valley and uh, was responsible for naming the Merced River and the Kings River, uh, the Sacramento River, the San Joaquin River, uh, the area that is now called Mariposa uh, because of the uh, voluminous uh, uh, number of butterflies that he saw and uh, Calavares, which we call Calaveras today because of the skulls and the skeletons that he found. Ultimately, there were no missions established in the Central Valley uh, like there were along the coast from San Diego to uh, Sonoma. Uh, this nice map, once again, of uh, California uh, today with the 58 counties superimposed on the physical features uh, comes from Humboldt State University. Uh, the Russians had a small impact on the history of early California. Uh, they were fur traders and of course uh, up until uh, the late 1860s owned what today we call Alaska and they had fur trading posts that stretched along the Alaskan coast and today's coast of British Columbia uh, and managed to get as far south as today's Sonoma County in California just northwest of San Francisco. You can today go on Highway 1 northwest of San Francisco in Sonoma County and visit uh, Fort Ross State Historic Park which is a rebuilding, because it's burned down a few times, of the old wooden tr fur trading fort that the Russians had in uh, Sonoma County. Uh, the Russian Count uh, Rezanov uh, was granted permission to marry the daughter of the uh, Presidio, uh, the commander of the Presidio in San Francisco. Now this, of course, uh, meant that the daughter of the Presidio uh, commander was Spanish. Uh, this was kind of a juxtaposition of, juxtaposition of world views because, of course, Rezanov was Eastern Orthodox or Russian Orthodox, and the daughter of the commander of the Presidio, being Spanish, was Roman Catholic. Uh, but the marriage was agreed to, so they were engaged, and this allowed Rezanov to gather badly needed supplies for his outposts farther north, especially in Sitka, Alaska. But the marriage did not take place. Uh, Rezanov died on his way back to Russia, uh, and uh, word didn't get back to the uh, to the potential betrothed, the young woman, until a year later, and that marriage never actually took place. So that's a little bit about the min minimal impact of the Russians on the California coast uh, in the early 1820s and 18-teens. Uh, the, the Spanish crown's resources were then sapped to fight France because Napoleon wanted to take over uh, France. Uh, back in Europe, uh, then basically the Californias became ignored by Spain. They were becoming a stagnant backwater, according to the authors. Uh, seeing this weakness, uh, people became restless in Mexico. A war of independence began in 1810, and ultimately Spain gained, excuse me, Mexico, the country of Mexico, gained independence from Spain in 1821. Uh, Fewer resources were coming from that part of the world, uh, the former Spanish colony, now called Mexico, uh, going up to the Californias. Uh, Monterey and San Juan Capistrano were actually looted and burned by pirates in 1818, and the Mexican flag was raised over Monterey in 1821. So what used to be belonging to Spain now belonged to the new country of Mexico, and Spain had lost its, its weak grip on what were once called the Californias. And that's the end of our narrated PowerPoint for Chapter 4.